Hey everybody, welcome back to Fifty Shades of Tay. Today is a very bittersweet day because it is the last day of CinemaCon 2023. I just got back to where I'm staying from the Coca-Cola after party, which was lit, you guys. It was so fun. I posted a couple videos on my Instagram store if you want to check those out. Uh, let me just give you a quick rundown of everything that I attended today, and then I will go into detail about each of those different events. So I started my day, uh, 10 a.m., Paramount Pictures had their presentation highlighting its upcoming slate. So I sat with Ray Ora, with Anne, with John Campia. We all sat together, one big happy family, watching the Nickelodeon uh, presentations for Paramount. And uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Paramount showed a lot of stuff. And then, uh, let's see, so I went to, oh my god, you guys, this was, this was crazy. I'll, I'll get more into it later, but I went to the lunch program. It was a conversation with Martin Scorsese and his Legend of Cinema Award presentation. I, wow, what, what an honor. And then uh, later, at 2.30, I went to Lionsgate's presentation. Their presentation was very short, but I did take notes because they use the majority of their time slot to show us Joyride. And uh, if you have not already had the chance, uh, Robert Meyer Burnett, he and I sat together, we watched Joyride, we laughed our asses off, we put up a review on my channel. I'll talk about that more later too. And uh, then I went to the CinemaCon Big Screen Achievement Awards which I will also talk about, but uh, I have put up some pictures of the award winners on the community tab on my YouTube channel. So take a look at those. Just crazy, crazy, crazy night. And then, yeah, the last thing I did was the 2023 Big Screen Achievement Awards After Party presented by Coca-Cola. Your boy had a couple drinks. It was fun. All right. So to start my day, so this was the Paramount Pictures presentation at 10 a.m. John Fithian came out, who is retiring uh, this year from leading cinema, CinemaCon and um, this was his last time introducing a studio presentation so that was kind of kind of sad but uh, after he had his speech there was a DJ who was on the stage uh, and he was hyping the audience and he started playing okay I made a joke and Ray told Anne he was like oh we already made a mistake sitting with Taylor uh, because the DJ was playing check yourself before you wreck yourself but I was like oh they're playing check yourself before you shrek yourself so there's that but um they brought out a skateboard ramp and i was like oh they're going they're going to start with tmnt and they did they had um sewers with people coming out of the sewers ray was like losing his mind uh they had the tmnt uh teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem logo up on the screen they had dancing people with like the ninja masks like the turtles wear uh they they were just going crazy and it was okay this was like one of the funniest parts of today. Uh, the president of distribution for uh, Paramount came out of one of the sewers that was on the stage and he was holding an actual pizza and he started handing out pizza to people that were like in the front section of the audience. And then he proceeded to recite, he changed it a little bit like to make it more related to CinemaCon, but he started to recite the Nicole Kidman speech from AMC. And then uh, he went on to talk about how Paramount has had six films open at number one last year. That's that's really impressive. Coming in at $2.4 billion at the box office. He went on to talk about the success of Scream 6 and uh, how they are focusing on the long term, not the short term, and how their number one priority is to listen to the consumer. And uh, he was talking about how pre-COVID, Ticket prices were going up and attendance was going down and how that is something that they are working on, actively working on. And um, there is no limit to what we can accomplish together in service of the audience. And um, he went on to talk about the success of Top Gun Maverick, Smile, which he called undeniably satisfying, you guys, Smile. So fun. And he was saying that we need theatrical to make streaming work. The evidence is clear. And then, uh, if this is your first day joining me for the CinemaCon uh, recaps, or if you've been here since day one, just let me tell you guys, I take notes in a notebook in the pitch black, so some of it takes me a second to decipher, and um, good luck to whatever this says. Uh, let's see. Oh, so yes, this is correct. Paramount had its best year at the box office. Uh, 
last year in, in a long, long time. So they were very, very excited about that. And they said that theatrical remains, uh, hmm, the something of our biz. Oh, Cornerstone. There we go. You guys, it's really hard to write in a pitch black theater, I'm telling you right now. But uh, then they brought out Seth Rogen, and uh, he was there to talk about TMNT Mutant Mayhem, which comes out August 4th of this summer. And uh, he was talking about how they built the stage he was on for Adele. He was, he was hilarious, you guys. And uh, he was saying that that was not the first time he's seen a studio executive emerge from a sewer. And he went on to talk about his relationship with TMNT growing up and how in 1987, when the animated series premiered, he was five years old. He said that this film is weird, funny, brave, noble, and smart. And that they cast actual teenagers to get that teenage energy and he said that, like, basically, uh, they wanted to really capture that teenage element and that aspect in this film. So they, like, let the cameras, well, I guess it's, it's, it's not live action, so they let the audio roll. And he said that there were so many disgusting things that the kids said that they couldn't use in the movie. So that was really funny. All right, so uh, the clip was amazing it was so much fun it was hilarious it mainly focused on the turtles their relationship with april and then just the plethora of mutants that are going to cause mayhem in this film but uh it was really funny because the turtles they asked april they were like do you think there are more people out there like you and then they said that will accept us and then like she had a, like a hopeful look on her face and she was like no absolutely not <laughs> and then uh bruno mars started playing the song superfly and then it showed Bebop, Rocksteady, a bunch of other characters. They all had really funny introductions too when they were talking about like all the different mutants. They just had really funny um, introductions. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right. So from there, they went on to talk about Transformers 1, which is the name of the new animated Transformers film. This will be coming out July 19th of 2024. They said this is a story that has never been told before. And then they started to list the cast, and you guys, I was writing so fast. Chris Hemsworth, Brian Terry Henry, Scarlett Johansson, Keegan-Michael Key, John Hamm, Lawrence Fishburne. That's, that's very exciting. They didn't have too much to share, just the casting and the title. I believe this is the first time that we've heard the title of Transformers 1, an animated Transformers theater, uh, theatrical release coming out. And then they went on to talk about SpongeBob and... Uh, they announced that the new one, it's going to be coming out May 23rd of 2025. It's called the SpongeBob movie Search for Square Pants. And that this one's going to focus on a battle with the Flying Dutchman character. So that's cool to see him return. And that, honestly, she said this is going to be the biggest SpongeBob movie ever. So I'm excited because I love SpongeBob. I feel like it's been a while since uh, we've gotten some SpongeBob in our lives. And another thing it feels like it's been a long time without is Avatar, The Last Airbender. They showed off... One picture, though, uh, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to check to see if they, they put it out publicly, but it looked great. It's just one, I don't know if it was concept art or one final marketing um, image. And she said that this movie will blow you away. Uh, I'm very excited. I'm a huge fan of Avatar The Last Airbender. But speaking of being blown away, they started to talk about the Smurf movie. There's a new one coming out February 14th of 2025. So on Valentine's Day, nothing says Valentine's Day like a Smurf, right? Well... I was excited because Katy Perry was Smurfette in two of them. I want to say two of them. And uh, they were talking about Smurfette and how Smurfette was going to come out on stage. So I was like, oh, is Katy Perry going to come out on stage? Um, they said, this movie is going to answer the age old question of what is a Smurf? And then they brought out their new Smurfette, Rihanna, fresh from the Super Bowl. Oh, you guys, to see Rihanna, so exciting. She was really funny too. She made a lot of jokes and obviously she knows how to work a crowd and to have that stage presence. She said she tried to get the role of Papa Smurf, but it didn't work out. And then she said she loved this job because she got to show up in her pajamas every day in her third trimester. because She's currently pregnant. And she said she loved being a blue badass. So not only is Rihanna voicing Smurfette in this film, she's also writing and performing new original songs for the film and producing the film. So uh, my uh, interest level in a new Smurf film has like gone through the roof because I love Rihanna. 
Next up is something that honestly I could not care less about. <laughs> Paw Patrol, the mighty movie. I know, I'm sorry to all six of you that like Paw Patrol. I just don't know honestly what it is. I mean, I saw I saw the trailer, but what? What did, what did I watch? It's kind of like yesterday when they showed the um, migration thing. I'll watch it. I'll go. You guys know. I'll go see some migrating ducks or some paws on patrol. This movie comes out September 29th of 2023. They also listed their cast, and I was writing as fast as I could. Kristen Bell, Serena Williams, Kim Kardashian and her kids, Chris Rock. Uh, the trailer they showed us, it was not finished yet. So there was like some finished footage mixed in with some like very rough animation it looks like a movie that maybe uh, like my nieces will like. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they watch Paw Patrol. But um, I guess this is not even the first movie of Paw Patrol. Um, so, But on to something I'm more excited about after that presentation, the voice of Optimus Prime shook the Coliseum. And he said hello to this Las Vegas palace of Caesar. And he said that Movie theaters are our home. And he talked about Stephen Cable Jr. who came out. Um, Transformers Rise of the Beast comes out June 9th of 2023. And it picks up a few years after the Bumblebee movie, which I love the Bumblebee movie with Haley Seinfeld. So I'm excited to see the continuation of that. There's going to be Terracons, Maximals. It was shot. This was cool, too. It was shot all over the world. And he listed some locations that it was shot at. So New York. Iceland, Peru, on top of volcanoes. Uh, so I'm excited to see all these different locations. And then he brought out Anthony Ramos, uh, which I will tell you more about. Well, I guess I could just say it now. Um, Anthony Ramos got an award tonight, along with Dominic Fishbeck, who also came out with him. And uh, he got the Rising Star of the Year Award. Uh, and that was one of the last things I did today, was attend that award ceremony. And um, on the way, so I was, I where was I heading? I was leaving and he was, I don't know. Anyways, we crossed paths and as we were walking towards each other, I smiled and I just like waved like, hello. So he came up to me and I was like, oh, hey, Anthony, like congratulations congratulations on your award. Uh, very well deserved. And then we took a picture. So it's, um, I think I put it on my community tab, but it's also on my Instagram, on my Twitter. It was very nice. I was one of the first people to congratulate him though, because it was literally moments after he got the award. So just very well deserved. And uh, he came out, yeah, with Dominique and... Dominique had a really unique story. Um, she gave a shout out to everyone that works for Regal while she was on stage. And she told us that she used to work at a Regal theater and that she would watch all these movies and dream that one day she would be in these films that she sees on the big screen every day. And now she's in Transformers. So that's pretty awesome. So this new Transformers, Rise of the Beasts, it's set in the 90s. And it has the fashion, the culture, the music of the times. Uh, Anthony Ramos said there's going to be a lot of 90s hip hop and that it captures the beat and the flavor of the time. So I'm a 90s boy. Don't tell anyone. I was born 2010. How about that? I don't know how that would make me because I don't know math. But uh, this movie takes place in 1994. So after the Transformers Rise of the Beast footage, which looks great, it looks really good, uh, they moved on and started talking about Apple original films. And um, I got very excited for this because I knew exactly where they were going with this. Um, I think some people didn't know because I heard a couple people say like Apple, but it's like, oh no, I know, I know what's going on here. The partnership between Apple and Paramount. They said they're so proud to work with Martin Scorsese to exclusively bring to theaters. Um, whoa, what did I write here? Premieres. Oh, right, they're gonna premiere at a Cannes Festival uh, next month. I was like, what, it didn't, okay, sorry, <laughs> in the dark. But yes, they, they showed us, I think they said first time ever footage of Killers of the Flower Moon, Martin Scorsese's new film, Apple with Paramount. Um, I'm just so excited for this film, before they brought out Martin Scorsese to talk about it, um, they just went over like a lit, like a crazy list of his filmography. They touted him as one of the world's most powerful voices for cinema preservation. And when Martin Scorsese came out, the room went crazy. Everyone knew he was going to be there because he later received his award. 
But um, he, he gave a really interesting stat, and I guess I never realized this, but it made sense when he, when he said it. So this is the sixth picture that he's done with Leonardo DiCaprio, and the tenth with Robert De Niro, but the first to have both of them together. So six films with Leonardo DiCaprio, ten films with Robert De Niro, first film to feature both of them together. That That's crazy to me. He talked about how that this film uh, was made in Oklahoma in 105 to 110 degree weather. No, no, thank you. And uh, it's based on the best-selling book. So these are my notes. These are my notes for the footage they showed. I was like watching and then I was like writing. I wrote, oh shit. I wrote, wow. And then I wrote October. So <laughs> I love the footage we saw. And then, ooh, up next, you guys. Ziggy Marley came out on stage, and this is actually a really fun story that I'll tell you guys. So um, I used to work at the zoo, and while I was there, I did special events. And one of the special events we had was Ziggy Marley and his wife, Orla Marley. They had a children's book come out about birds? Uh-oh, about birds. Um, and... They had a reading and a signing at the zoo, and I was one of the people in charge of running this event. So the whole day I spent with Ziggy, his wife, their kids, um, the whole day. And that whole family, everyone was just so nice, so polite, so friendly. So to see him again, it's been maybe like a year and a half now uh, since I saw him last. I was like, oh, how fun to, to be here and to see him. So he came out. He's producing this film. He's also the steward of his father's legacy. This film is about unity, about love, and um, he thanked the people of Jamaica for helping this film uh, come to life. It comes out next year. The title is Bob Marley, One Love. The release date is going to be January 12th of 2024. So I'm very much looking forward to that. And it was just really fun. It was really fun to see him again. So speaking of really fun, uh, one of my favorite newer franchises is A Quiet Place. And uh, they had John Krasinski. Well, they started with the John Krasinski like video montage of when A Quiet Place Part 2 came out. Things still weren't back to normal. It was still during the pandemic and people were still really hesitant to go back to theaters. So there was a video montage of John Krasinski going from theater to theater to theater. Like it, it was just a bunch of different theaters thanking people for coming out, uh, just being with the crowd, seeing their reactions. And uh, then he came out on stage himself. And he premiered the first footage of A Quiet Place, day one. This film's going to come out March 8th of 2024. It's going to be starring Lupita Nyong'o. It's going to be taking place in the same world as the other two Quiet Place films. It's just going to be a different story with different characters on the first day. So this film is set in New York City. And it's from the same director as the Nicolas Cage uh, film Pig. So if you guys have seen Pig, it's going to be the same director. He said that the film wrapped two weeks ago. And uh, he was like, as a joke, he's like, oh, I haven't even asked yet if I can uh, show this footage. But the footage they showed us was incredible. Basically, uh, it takes place in the busy streets of New York City. How loud it is. You hear all the car horns, the traffic, just like the noise of the city. And then it goes silent. And you see what looks like asteroids falling from the sky to the city. During the footage they showed us, it had intercut the words, Witness the day our world went quiet. So I honestly am hyped, 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 hyped for that. And then John Krasinski, after that footage for A Quiet Place Day One, came back out on stage and said that's not the only film he has in production with Lionsgate right now. And, uh, oh, sorry, with Paramount right now. And said he has a movie called If which is coming out May 24th of 2024. He joked and said it's a movie that his kids could watch before they turn 40 and was just joking about how like a bunch of his other stuff that he's done, he doesn't want his kids seeing. This film is about imagination. It's a hybrid of live action and CGI. And then he, these are his words, star, it stars an up and comer, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, so that was pretty funny. He said he's still in the middle of his director's cut. So they didn't have a ton of stuff to show us, but um, I loved what they showed us. Let's see. He said because he was on the same stage <laughs> that they made for Adele, he did not want to come empty handed. So this film is about 
a girl who can see everyone's imaginary friends and they are all left behind because people have moved on, forgotten about them. It stars Steve Carell, as I said earlier, Ryan Reynolds. Actually, I took a note. Uh, Ryan Reynolds' character is the man upstairs. And then uh, Fiona Shaw is going to be playing the grandmother. And Bobby Moynihan. Let's see, Matt Damon, Emily Blunt, uh, Vince Vaughn, Aquafina. They're all going to be in this film. I'm assuming a lot of them are going to be voices of the different animated uh, imaginary friends. But he said this movie is about hopes, dreams, ambitions, believing in something bigger and beautiful. So this movie, I, I had no clue about it. And now I'm very excited for it. It looks like it could be a really fun film. And speaking of fun films, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. This movie comes out in July. And uh, they showed us a never-before-seen trailer. And it looked really good, but it was just like a really teeny tiny taste of the film. And then they came back on stage and they said, you know what, we just had a quick huddle backstage and we decided we're going to move up the release date a few days. <laughs> I think it was only like three days. Um, so now it's going to be coming out the 12th. But then they went on to say, you know what, we're going to just show you guys an extended sequence of 20 minutes of the film. But they emphasize this is not the opening of the film, so they just showed us 20 minutes from the film, just not the opening of it. And it was incredible. It was mainly a car chase. And I know I just said the other day with Indiana Jones that I wish that it wasn't just a car chase that they showed us, because I wanted to get like more of a feel about what the story was going to be in the characters and stuff. But for Mission Impossible, this car chase was crazy. Uh, it was really, really fun. And I, I really enjoyed it. And they cut it off at like a cliffhanger. Something happens where the two cars are going to collide and then it just cuts. And Ray and I both like gasped so loud. We we're like, oh man, like what's going to happen? What's going to happen? That was nuts. So that wraps up the Paramount Pictures presentation. So that was from 10, 40, or 10 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. And then I had about a half hour to the next thing that I wanted to do. Hold on, I'm dying. <laughs> this is what you guys came for to watch me rehydrate. So at 12.15, they had the special filmmaker lunch program. It was a conversation with Martin Scorsese, the Legend of Cinema Award presentation. <sighs> it was so cool to be in his presence and to hear him speak. And he's so well-spoken and so, I don't know, he has like a really good positive energy about him. And uh, he came out on stage. He accepted his award. He was very gracious, very happy to be there. And then I knew that the second part of it was going to be a conversation with him. I just didn't know who it was going to be with. And I said, and now to come out and have a conversation with Martin Scorsese, here's Leonardo DiCaprio. And Leo came out and the two of them talked. It was really funny, especially because Leo would ask a question and then Martin Scorsese's answers were so long. And then like Leo kept like joking, like, oh, I think we're out of time. <laughs> It was just really funny. And then Martin kept joking, like, oh, I'll let you talk eventually. Just their chemistry together, obviously, they've worked together, uh, just was really nice. It was a really fun, really enlightening, really entertaining, just really crazy, I could not believe it, uh, event. So after that, uh, the next thing was at 2.30 p.m. And it was Lion Gate's presentation. And then, like I said earlier, they used most of their allotted time to show us Joyride. So I took notes still from the Lionsgate presentation, but they did not show us a lot. They mainly just like told us about stuff and then got straight into the movie. But what they did do for Lionsgate was David Spitz, the president of Worldwide Theatrical Distribution came out, presented, this was the final presentation of the week. So they saved Lionsgate for very last. Uh, he was talking a little bit about the previous year and then Adam Folgeson, who's the vice chair of um, motion picture for Lionsgate, came out and he talked about. So today, right now, it is Thursday, April 27th. And he talked about how tonight two of their films are releasing wide. The first one up is Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, which is based on the Judy Bloom book. He was talking about how Judy Bloom not only endorses this film, she has gone on record and said she thinks it's better than her book, which is very impressive to hear. And uh, he said it currently, at the time of this presentation, had a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. So that's very encouraging. And then it was funny because 
I would say like the complete opposite type of movie, Sisu, is the other film that they have releasing wide, which I'm going to try and see this weekend. Whew, good luck to me fitting that in, but I want to see it so bad. It looks incredible. Uh, so Sisu and Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret are both going wide tonight from Lionsgate. So that's pretty cool to have two such different films releasing tonight. All right, so then they basically just listed some of their upcoming things. On May 20th, they have About My Father, which stars Robert De Niro and a peacock. <laughs> uh, they didn't go into it too much, but I've seen the trailers before. Uh, it looks pretty funny. It looks pretty interesting. Then June 16th, they have The Blackening. I have not, I still have not seen a trailer and I was really hoping they would show us a trailer for it because people have been telling me that it, it looks great. I just, I, I've seen a poster and now I've heard them talk about it a little bit. June 16th, The Blackening. Their slogan for the film is, we can't all die first. He said, it's scary, funny, smart, bold. And he said, it's a movie that was made for black culture and just it's going to be very funny and I'm looking forward to it. I just, maybe, maybe if, you know what? I love going into movies without seeing a trailer because I feel like a lot of trailers show, especially if it's a horror film, all the scary parts, or if it's, this seems to be a horror comedy from what I've heard about it, all the funny parts. So maybe if I don't see a trailer before I see it, I can go into it blind and just see it for the first time when I actually see the whole film in context. So then the next film they talked about is called White Bird. This comes out August 25th. It's from the best-selling author of the book Wander. They didn't really talk about it other than that. And then they went on to just briefly, very briefly mention Expendables 4 coming out September 22nd. And then Ordinary Angels, October 13th, which stars Hilary Swank and Alan Richardson. And then I was so excited for this because I was really wondering if they were going to talk about it. They talked about Saw 10. This comes out October 27th. And uh, the only things they really said, but it was very encouraging. They just did, didn't say much, but what they did say was very encouraging. Audiences have told us loudly and clearly what they want from this franchise. So they said they are all ears. They are listening. They're bringing back Jigsaw for Saw 10. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I just wish you got a little bit of a taste of it. But what we did get, and I think by now, because right now when I'm recording this, it's 11.45 at night. I think by now this trailer has been released for Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This comes out November. Oof. I think this is 17th, but you know, in the dark. This takes place 64 years before the other films, which... Honestly, if you ask me, that's a missed opportunity. Why not just make it five years earlier, make it 69 years before the events? I don't get it. But they showed us the first poster, which I'm assuming is also out now. And the tagline on the poster was, everyone hungers for something. And then they showed us the first teaser, which I'm thinking is also out by now. But uh, it showed footage of Peter Dinklage, Rachel Zegler. It says it's going to be coming out this Thanksgiving. The official release date is November 17th. So I'm, I'm very interested in it. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But then they moved on to Joyride. So basically, what, literally what I said is that that's what they said about all these films. They just listed them, release dates, a little bit of casting. But for Joyride, which officially comes out July 7th, that's so far away. It's April, May, June, July. That's pretty far. But they brought out um, Adele Lynn, Ashley Park, Sabrina Wu, Stephanie Hsu, Seth Rogen. And uh, they, they had insane chemistry, all of them together on this stage. You could just tell it's like a bunch of best friends. They were all very, very raunchy on stage, which was perfect because it set the tone of the film we were about to see. And I have to tell you guys something really crazy um i was texting my sister today about just like what i've been doing all day and i was just trying to fill her in i was like oh i'm at this i'm at this and um she reminded me that i went to high school with one of the girls from joyride sherry cola and uh that she and my sister and our fr like they, we were all friends in high school and i was like oh my god I, I i completely forgot uh the whole film i was like she seems very familiar i know i've seen her in a couple things on tv but i believe don't quote me on this, but I believe this is her first film. So that was just a cool connection to uh, be reminded that we went to high school together. So shout out to Temple City High School. <laughs> uh, the director said she had just come out of working on Raya, The Last Dragon for two years for Disney. 
And what made her want to do this film was she just wanted to tell dick jokes. She worked for Disney, had to keep it squeaky clean for two years while working on Raya, and was ready to uh, have some fun. So this is an R-rated uh, comedy, ensemble comedy, and I that, that's all the notes I took because then the, the film started. But I had so much fun with this film. It was hilarious and um there are multiple scenes that they show in the trailer where i was like oh like i already know what the joke is because they showed it in the trailer but the joke sets up another joke that sets up another joke it was it was so good uh i've been like raving about it all day i cannot wait to see it again and rob and i yeah we put out our quick little reaction video to it on my channel he loved it. He and I were like busting up. We were laughing so hard. And it was funny because Ray sat, I think, two rows diagonally in front of us. I could hear him laughing his ass off too. One of my favorite scenes, which I didn't mention in our review, is the Cardi B scene. So in the trailer that's been released, the girls are trying to get past the airport security and find their way through the airport. And uh, they come up with a scheme to dress up as K-pop stars, where one of them's Lisa and one of them's Lisa too. But... Uh, they have to prove that they're actual K-pop stars. So they're trying to find a song that they all know. And they sing a uh, WAP by Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. And that scene is one of the funniest things I've seen in a theater in years. And this is a movie. I'm telling you guys right now. Joyride is a movie you want to see on the big screen with your girl group, with your friends, with as many people as you can. I would say see it opening weekend because the energy is just going to be off the charts in those theaters. So that was the end of the Lionsgate presentation uh, after their film ended. And then I had a few hours, uh, which was nice to just have like a little bit of a break just to relax before Coca-Cola presented the Big Screen Achievement Awards. So that was from 7.30 to 9. And that was also in the Coliseum, which is where all the screenings have been taking place. But I got to tell you guys right now. This award ceremony was nuts. I am so glad I was able to attend this. I'm just going to list off uh, the awards and who won. So the first award of the night was the NATO Spirit of the Industry Award. That went to Christopher Nolan and Emma Thomas. Then the Star of the Year Award went to Zendaya. The Comedy Ensemble Award went to the cast of Joyride. And accepting the award were Ashley Park, Sherry Cola, Stephanie Hsu, Sabrina Wu. And then... They did the CinemaCon Award of Excellence in Animation, and Chris Melodrondi from Illumination came out and accepted that award. Then it was the Cinema Verte Award, which went to Melissa McCarthy, and then the final award of the evening was the Rising Stars of the Year, which went to Anthony Ramos and Dominique Fishbeck. It was just a really nice way to like start wrapping up the week just to have uh, an award ceremony honoring all these people who have contributed so much to cinema and to movies and the theatrical experience. My favorite speeches were Christopher Nolan's, which was really funny, and Melissa McCarthy's, which was also very funny. For Christopher Nolan, um, he, he made a joke about how... Well, I, okay, you couldn't tell it was a joke at first. He told a story about how he was walking through a theater one day and someone walked by him and without stopping like to take a picture or to you know to talk to him the guy looked at him and said like you've changed the world and kept walking so then christopher nolan talked about that and that sentiment and that message and then a few minutes later went on to say oh by the way he thought i was someone else <laughs> and he was like but i feel like the sentiment's still there like he still meant what he said so i thought that was really funny and then uh the other speech I really liked was from Melissa McCarthy. She looked so good, you guys. She looked so good. And uh, she was just very bubbly and bright and full of energy and just like light into the room when she came out on that stage to accept her award. She talked about how she saw Grease in theaters seven times and how Little Mermaid is like the movie she's seen the most. And she, she was telling a really funny story too about how when she heard they were doing a live action Little Mermaid, she was like, what is like Disney crazy? Like, why would you redo like this classic film? And then when she found out they wanted her for Ursula, she was like, you guys are crazy. Like, this is a classic film. Why would you do this? Right. And so then she was telling the story about how she called like the head of Disney. It wasn't, she wasn't talking about like Bob Iger, uh, but she said like one of the, one of the heads of, of the studio. 
And then she was, she was like, by the way, I don't have their number. And then she like kept talking as if like they had this conversation and she kept reminding us like, yeah, I've never talked to him on the phone or I couldn't get a hold of him even if I wanted to. And so then at the end of her little story about this, she like, she, she went like this and then hung up the phone and she's like, oh, I guess in my story too, I have a landline. So I just thought it was really funny that she like just kept going with that story. But the award ceremony was very fun and that led immediately into the 2023 Big Screen Achievement Awards After Party, which was also presented by Coca-Cola. And uh, that was the last event, you guys. I went, oh, they had a lot of uh, really nice food. Um, what did I eat? I was like texting David pictures of, they were like, oh, like, mm, I forgot. <laughs> they were little sliders. What was it? Short rib? Yeah. Oh my God, it was short rib. It was so good. And, um, they had just like Coca-Cola branding everywhere, Coke everywhere. Oh, Coke, Vegas, what? And um, it was just a really nice way to just end it. Everyone there was like so happy in such a good mood. I met a lot of you there too, which was very nice. I was running around taking pictures of everything, trying to just capture everything. And then I came back and now it's over. And uh, I can't believe, I cannot believe that CinemaCon came and went. This was like the fastest week of my life. It was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It was four days according to my math, but don't, don't double check that because you know me and math. But um, I had so much fun. I got to hang out with so many of my friends uh, from John and Anne and Ray, Chris, Rob, uh, Jeremy Johns, uh, Christian Harloff. I just got to hang out with so many of my friends in Vegas and cover this event together and see all these screenings. Uh, we were treated to presentations from Disney, Universal, Warner Brothers, Paramount, Lionsgate. Um, we were shown The Flash, which I still can't stop talking about. Well, no, not talking about because I'm not allowed to talk about it, but thinking about. There we go. And then The Boogeyman, which uh, if you saw that, <laughs> Rob and I did a live stream on his channel earlier. I spilled the beans that I didn't like Boogeyman. It was really disappointing to me. I just don't, I don't think we're allowed to review it yet. So you didn't hear that from me. And then today with Joyride, which was just, what a fun way though to end CinemaCon, just to have a really funny movie where the whole auditorium was like busting up and then to have this party and the award ceremony. So yeah, it's, uh, it's now Thursday, April 27th and CinemaCon 2023 is over. And I got to say, this has been one of the most, I don't know, like incredible, rewarding, like fun weeks of my life. And just to be here and my favorite thing, well, I think my favorite thing has been meeting you guys because I've met probably like 50 people this week and everyone has been so nice, so kind, so polite, so encouraging. Uh, so many of you have been giving me like words of encouragement and advice and just telling me the nicest, sweetest thing. So I really appreciate that. And then I just loved being able to take notes in my notebook. I just felt so, I don't know, like so proud that I was like working so hard to attend. You heard what I did today, like one, two, three, just like attend every single thing I could, uh, get as much notes as I could for you guys. And uh, it's just been like a really, really fun week. And I just, yeah, I cannot believe it's over. That was insanely fast. Uh, but I do have some very good news. So, on my way from Caesars, which is where CinemaCon is held, back to here. I was checking my YouTube channel on the YouTube Studio app. And my channel has gotten an insane amount of views uh, this week from you guys. So, thank you so much to everyone, whether this is your first time ever watching me or you've been watching me for the past six months. Thank you so much. Uh, but now, I... I can't believe I'm going to say it for the first time. This is crazy. My channel meets every requirement to be monetized. So uh, I have the subscribers. I now, the one thing that I was waiting on was the 4,000 hours of view time. I have exceeded it. But what's crazy too is like the YouTube studio app doesn't uh, refresh or doesn't like update every day. So I think it goes like maybe one or two days. I'm already 500 hours over the required limit. So, thanks to you guys, uh, I am going to be able to start making the, uh, the leap, going through the process 
of monetizing my YouTube channel. So very soon, I, okay, I don't want to say very soon because I was reading through it and it says it could take anywhere from one to six weeks. And with my luck, it'll be six weeks, but I will keep you guys updated. And um, pretty soon there will be super chats available. There will be memberships available and uh, there might even be some merch available. So anyone who has made it, we're 40 minutes deep. So if anyone's still here, <laughs> um, you guys are the first to hear this. And I just cannot express how much I appreciate every single one of you who have been watching. Uh, it just feels really, really, really rewarding. And like my hard work is finally paying off because I, I stand in front of the AMC Burbank 16 three, four, five days a week and I film these Taylor's takes. And to me, it's like, okay, it's, it's really fun and I love doing it, but does anyone like watch? And, and after this week, just the amount of love, support, uh, I try and reply to every comment. You guys watch and you guys, uh, you guys have done it and you guys have gotten me to be able to monetize my channel, which I cannot believe. And it's just going to be really fun. I can't wait to come up with some fun, uh, ways to incorporate memberships, which I'm going to be announcing hopefully very soon. And uh, just thank you so much, every single person, every single one, even you, even you. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed my CinemaCon coverage. There's so much to watch. So if this is your first video watching, uh, I have a social media reaction of The Flash, which they showed us. Uh, I have that with my friend Christian Harloff. That video is available on my channel. Um, I have a video with Chris Carr and Ray Ora where we talked briefly about the Disney presentation yesterday. I have two videos with the one, the only, Robert Meyer Burnett up on my channel. One we took in front of these giant transformers in the limo lot of Caesar's Palace and we just talked a little bit about the presentations we were shown that day. And then today we did our quick little review of the new movie we just were shown, Joyride, and um, if you watch to the very end, I'm really sorry, <laughs> but it, it, it's a really funny review. So I just want to, again, say thank you so much to everyone. Uh, I'll, I'll never forget this week, like ever, and it's just incredible, insane. I'm so appreciative. And now to monetize the channel and just go, just go, keep going. This is nuts. This is so insane. And I could not do it without you guys. So thank you again. And I hope you guys enjoyed all my CinemaCon coverage. I'm hoping to be able to very soon do a live stream. I don't want to wait too long because then it's like, whoa, that was like a month ago. But very soon do a live stream where you guys can write in and we can just talk about if you have specific questions. The only things are, I do not think I'm allowed to review the Boogeyman. And I cannot give too much info about the flash because the only thing they allowed us to do was a social media reaction so i can't give like spoiler details i can't talk about the plot really i can't really say too much about that stuff but everything else i should be able to talk about uh so just like the different footage the different presentations so yeah that'll do it i i can't believe it like once i once i stop recording this video CinemaCon's over because like right now it's still on. It's still happening because I'm still making content for you guys. But the minute I hit stop recording, CinemaCon 2023 is over. So before I get emotional, just thank you guys. I appreciate it. I hope you guys had as much fun watching this stuff as I did making it. And I just appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much to every single person I met this week. Uh, keep sending me the pictures because I've been saving them to my phone and I really appreciate it and it's really fun. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I will see you guys again very, very soon. And I'll keep you guys updated on when the next live stream is and when memberships are live and when the merch goes out. I'll see you guys again soon. <laughs> oh, bye.